everybody. This is Stefan. This is Percy. And we're Tensmiths. Ten yeah. Uh, you might also notice Bryn wandering in and out of frame, but yeah. we're here on this very, very warm June day to talk to you yep. about steaks. You can see we're here in our backyard in our oh. guest bedroom. Um, through yeah. all of 20, the summer of 2020 when yeah. we wanted to be able to see... 2021. Well, now it's 2021. But last it's summer, 20. last year when it, was, uh, it wasn't safe necessarily to have everybody indoors, this worked out great for us to be able to have uh, friends over. They could stay the night in the, in the tent behind us. We could do cookouts right and the like. Right there? Uh, this it's year we just old, yeah we just set it up for uh, for Percy's birthday party last week when he turned yeah. seven. So uh, anyway, let's get into uh, into the do's and don'ts of steaks. First of all, you got to pick the right steak. Now, as you can see, um, we've laid out a whole bunch of steaks here, and we're going to talk about the ones we don't like first. And then, then the good one. And then what we do like. But let's talk first about tarp steaks. Now when you're putting up a tarp, you don't need a massive steak. I mean, we, Like this big one, we separated them by size. We did. So if you're putting up something smaller, tarp steaks, you can go small With and light. Very small. Well, uh, this oh, is the smallest one we could find. Uh, or, you know, you can go something a little bit meatier, depending on where you are, what your application. I uh, don't have any wooden stakes out here, the sort of thing you would carve in the field. If that's where you are and what you're up to, and I'll be honest, that's probably what I do about 50, 75 percent of the time I'm in the woods. I'll just carve a stake. Um, but you already know what you're doing, so I'm not going to stress too much about that at this yeah. point. But for metal stakes and pre-made stakes, you have different options. now. I do a lot of hammock camping, so I use a lot of very lightweight uh, steaks that can handle a lot of abuse. Not heavy steaks like this one. We when got I here. right, this is one that we sell at Tensimus, and this is one that I like to use when setting up oil skin tarps, especially if I'm able to, if it's a shorter trip, or if I know I'm going into um, depending on the soil. End of the day, soil is going to dictate a lot about the steak you're going to pick. Um, so this is one that we offer. Uh, I honestly, if I do carry these into the woods, I carry four and that's it. I can generally find something else to tie off to and, and whatnot. And uh, this is a steel stake that's been galvanized to help it last them a little longer. So, and sometimes you got to like see the ground to like see if this is a good place to put your stake. You're absolutely right. Uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. Yeah. This is a, a tarp style steak or tent steak often gets sold with, you know, your discount hammocks and discount tarps and the like. It's aluminum. Um, this is one that is in perfect condition because it has never been put into the ground. I guarantee you the second I use this and put it into the ground, it will not look very good. And they will probably... You know, they'll last you a little while. I do know some folks who carry these and use these exclusively because they're so cheap that when you forget them at your campsite, uh, you won't be heartbroken by it. But I'm not a big fan of them. That's tarps. Let's talk a little bit about tent steaks. And uh, I'm going to start with the things I dislike the most, and then we'll move up to what we sell. This is something I have hated since I first helped the family set up a tent in the 1970s uh, and I still hate today. You can get them at any campground or state park or whatever, uh, but you will shatter these. You will break them. Uh, they, they'll hit a single rock and be wasted. I, I think any of us who spent any time in cloth shelters of some form or another have a strong dislike for this tent stake. And it does not have the strength to hold up canvas. Um, when we get into other canvas stakes, these are something that you often find for cheap either at a you know, a discount store or a, you know, big box hardware store or whatever. They're all right. They're essentially just a, a steel spike. 
with a nice plastic top on there. That plastic top will eventually give out. Um, these will do in a pinch. If I have to buy something, I'll probably buy something like this. Uh, we do go up to, you can use something like what we sell for tarps. This will work well, especially for things like walls and the like. Not terribly historically uh, accurate in appearance, but for wall tents, these can be really good. Um, and this size is one that we've used for years on tents. Um, works out pretty well. Uh, like straight steel, you're going to find that these things rust, and a lot of our stakes are rusty. I didn't outside of, uh, of this one. I didn't bring anything new from the shop just because I wanted to really get into the nitty gritty of these things. These are decent. I, uh, I like these and of course our tent stakes are these lovely um, handmade, hand forged by a guy for us in Ohio. Uh, he puts a really nice point on there which these are, these are the bomb. The problem I have with a rounded top uh, steak uh, is that you're going to end up eventually bending that over. This having nice flat top is going to give you a lot better of a striking surface and you're going to cause a lot, you're going to bend your stakes a lot less. Um, these are the stakes I first made for our uh, 16th century unit and they were because I could get square stock steak, uh, square stock for cheap and I thought that was a great idea so I just pounded a ton of these out. I have come to loathe these both both as a tent owner and as a tent manufacturer because of the square profile this just wears on stakes fast. Now that said there are ways to mitigate that but I steer people away from this now and we steer people towards using a nice round stock that is going to slide through a stake loop much better. And toward that end, this particular monstrosity, this is a piece of rebar that's been pointed nicely and, and put on the ground. I see a lot of uh, vendors and sutlers like these things, especially in uh, poor soil, or if you're going to be set up for a long time. Um, the biggest problem is if you don't use these right, you're just shredding a stake loop and if you get a lot of wind and have left any give on those stake loops or your ropes you're going to shred them much more quickly so this is going to reduce the life on your stake loops that said all honesty stake loops are meant to be eventually replaced they're not going to last forever but stuff like square stock and rebar are going to do a lot more damage quickly to what your uh, what your life expectancy is on those loops. So, now we've talked about a lot about choosing the right kind of steak and, uh, you know, go for a round, go for something that's going to hold up and something that's going to be appropriate to your soil and, and your application. Let's talk a little bit about putting stakes in the ground. Uh, This is Stefan. <laughs> we'll go again. It's fine. You can go as many times.